So when I was growing up, the closest thing to a Muslim in Hollywood who wasn't a terrorist was Azim, played by Morgan Freeman. He was Robin Hood's Moorish Muslim sidekick in the 1991 movie Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I mean, he had a prayer mat and everything. But then, uh, yeah, that's not how we pray. Azim seemed to be mixing it up with maybe some other kind of Eastern prayer. So we got the Muslim representation, but it wasn't accurate, more exaggerated, a caricature. That was how Hollywood thought covering Muslims in a positive or normal or non-terroristic way looked like. And to be honest, sometimes still does. But these days, I'm also sitting at home with my family watching Disney Plus, and well, there's a new Marvel TV series which follows Kamala Khan, a Pakistani-American teenager from New Jersey who is obsessed with the Avengers and finds out she has superpowers. It's got Muslims praying in a mosque correctly, school life, family life, just being a Muslim teen, all totally accurate and relatable and, yeah, funny too. Brother told us about your Avengers party. He did. Yes. And even though it will be a distraction from your studies and there will be a lot of haram going on there, Kamala, we have decided to let you go. Really? 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 <laughs> yes, but there are special conditions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your Abu will drive you there, and he will go inside with you for two hours. And as far as your dressing goes, I have a surprise for you. The Hulk! <laughs> wait, wait, best is yet to come. Ta-da! I just the puppy! See, Kamala, big Hulk and little Hulk, bada Hulk or choti Hulk. Huh? So cute you all will look. Oh, huh? oh my God. <laughs> and it's not just me and my wife and kids who have become fans of Miss Marvel. The show is winning Muslim fans across the world, too, while also, and this is so fascinating to me, keeping its mass appeal. It's now the highest-rated Marvel project on Rotten Tomatoes, it, higher than even Black Panther and Avengers Endgame. So for those who say diversity and representation is all just liberal token nonsense, this is why it matters. There's an appetite for stories about people that haven't been told in ways like this. And it can only be done when you have a diverse group of writers in the room, in casting, in directing, in all aspects of storytelling. That's how Miss Marvel happened. It's the brainchild of Sana Amana, the Pakistani woman, Pakistani-American woman from New Jersey, who joined Marvel back in 2009. In 2014, she co-created the new Miss Marvel comic book series, the series off which the TV show is now based, reviving an old character reimagined as a young Muslim teenage girl. At the time, Vox described her as having become one of the most powerful people in the comic book industry, who made it her mission to redefine what's possible for women and people of color in an industry dominated by white men. She even got to meet Barack Obama in 2016, a big comic book fan, when she was asked to introduce him at an event at the White House. Earlier this week, as Disney Plus dropped the finale of Miss Marvel, I got to speak with Sana about Miss Marvel and her experience creating Kamala Khan. Sana Amanat, thank you for joining me on the show today. First off, congratulations on the global success of an amazing show. My family and I loved it, although we haven't yet had time to watch the finale, which dropped Wednesday. So let me start. We're very excited about it. Let <laughs> me start by asking, what does Miss Marvel mean to you? Not just as a TV character, comic book character, Marvel superhero, but now as a cultural or even multicultural icon, which is what she's become, hasn't she? I, I mean, I, I hope so. I, I, I feel like this has been a very historic moment um, on many levels for me, very personally. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Um, can you guys see me okay? I think we might have cut out, but... No, we've got you. Okay, great. Um, so, but, but I, I think that this has been a very um, emotional journey and it has, has been a lot of hard work with a lot of fantastic creatives and, and writers and directors and, and people that I'm such fans of. Um, but to have it out in the world and see the reactions that people have had is quite emotional and significant for me. And I, I, I can't put into the words, I just can't put into the words what, what, what I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling very emotional today specifically. And uh, we're so happy for you because I can only imagine what it must be like to be the creator of something this globally successful, popular and genuinely loved. I'm watching this with my family and we're wondering, are we watching Marvel? Are we watching 
a Bollywood movie. You guys don't shy away <laughs> from the Indian, Pakistani, Desi side of your characters, even at a wedding. Let's have a watch of a quick scene. I think that was you we just saw there cameoing in the audience. Uh, you must have had a lot of fun making this show. I had so much fun. Let me tell you, uh, getting a dance was one of my first ambitions for this show was to get a dance and uh, to, to get a dance that felt like not just like a Bollywood dance, really. It was just like a show, like a dance that felt like if you were at a wedding in your family, that's what it feels like. It's chaotic, it's not perfect, there's a lot of love, the families are coming together, and that's what was really exciting. I wanted to get in that dance, but um, I wasn't, I'm wasn't. i not as talented as those guys, so I, I, I had a good time getting that cameo. <laughs> I'm watching the show as a brown Muslim myself with two brown Muslim daughters. All I could think about was, wow, I never had shows like this when I was a kid. And it's yet again the importance of representation in the writer's room, on set, at the executive producer level, because there's just no way a non-Pakistani or non-Indian or non-Muslim could get some of those details so right about religion, culture, language, family life that you guys, you guys totally nail in this show. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I mean, I think it says so much about needing to have that authentic representation behind the camera, in front of the camera, even because our actors would come up to us and be like, I don't know, this doesn't feel quite right. I wouldn't say it like this. All of those elements, I think, really added to the process. And I'm so grateful that the studio empowered us to be able to not just tell these stories, but to be able to make these nuanced decisions like the dance and the music and the art in the background and some of the language that we use. And, and we kind of really leaned into it. We were super excited about it. So um, again, so it goes to show how important it, you can, sometimes research isn't enough. You need the people actually physically there. And, you know, and we also had consultants on top of it. Um, so all of those aspects, I think yeah. really made it a richer show. The attention to detail is just superb. My favorite scene is that mosque uh, election scene where you divide up the Muslim community by kind of fun stereotypes. <laughs> the aunties and the pious boys made, made me laugh out loud. I think every Muslim watching is like, that's my local mosque. Um, yeah. the, the detail's excellent. Um, the acting is fantastic from the likes of Iman Vellani as Miss Marvel. Great cast. But my daughter, my teenage daughter, is a big fan of this show now. She wanted me to ask you this question. You are the co-creator of Miss Marvel, uh, the comic book character. How much of yourself did you put into Kamala Khan? Do you see yourself as Kamala Khan? I mean, I, I most certainly do see myself in Kamala Khan. I certainly see myself in Iman. I think, you know, a lot of myself has been in the show and in the comic um, from the beginning. I think a lot of ourselves, a lot of the creators now have put themselves. That was the biggest challenge when, you know, I was talking to the writers for the first time, I was like, bring yourselves and your identity story into this as well, because she is all of us in a lot of ways. But yeah, I mean, I think the vibrancy of the community and the mosque experience and, um, you know, just growing up as a kid in Jersey, like I did and having a big, crazy family and being annoyed at my family and loving my family. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of me in there. And honestly, again, going back to the dance, we used to do those dance competitions at weddings. And I was a, a choreographer <laughs> for my family and my family always won. It was always our side that won. I just want to say. 